Ash, Persian Black Queen here from Mad Flavor TV. We're talking to Mia X, one of the, or the troop troop, if you ask me, of all of the soldiers of No Limit Soldier. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Girl, how you Everything holding it good. down with all those men around you? You know you queen, queen for real when you could do that. <laughs> you know, my my I called them my brothers, my nephews, my sons. You know, it was like a lady with a, a, a house full of children. <laughs> you know, it was it was a good thing. Um, the, the guys were always amazing from day one. Nobody yeah. was never disrespectful. Um Everybody had home training. So I think that's the mama. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was a mean mom. <laughs> right. Um, but um, I think that's what led to the success of No Limit. Yeah. And they they were very respectful. I and, think that's and, awesome. And, I think yeah. so. You were introduced in the first part of the five part series. And you started off by explaining your story of working in the record company. And being a mom of two, I believe, right? Yes. So how was that, like, trying to balance that whole dynamic? Were you able to leave your kids with family while you went to L.A.? Did you take them with you? Like, how did that work for you? Um, my kids stayed with my mother and father. And my mm -hmm. grandparents lived next door. Oh, so beautiful. kids were with my parents and grandparents. It was very hard I know. to leave them. Um mm -hmm because I, I had uh, put out a record in 92, but I was home. Right. And that was different running, you know, up the road to a show and then back home. But now we talking about going, you know, from the South to the West Coast. Yeah. That was traumatic for me. Um, you know, once I got there and it's, it set in, you know, like, where are my children? Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh my goodness. That was pretty <laughs> hard. Um, but my mother and my grandmother understood the bottom line, the end game of it all. Mm -hmm. They they knew I wanted to be a rapper. You know, I told them I was going to be one when I was 12. Mm -hmm. And that's the only job I kept telling people I was going to do. So they believed in me and they, they took care of the kids, you know, but um, it was hard. If you're a mom and you have to leave your babies, it's hard. Oh, yes. I am a mom and I understand that. Comes it's it's home. Yeah. But would you say that the, the sacrifice, I like, I believe this as a mom, you know, even, or as a person, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the reward. Would you Absolutely. feel like that was, that's something that you can agree with? Absolutely. Because we went from a shotgun home and they trusted the process and they believed in me. And then I was able to move my grandparents with me when I bought a home. I was able to buy my mom a home around the corner from me. And so, um, yes, the sacrifice was a serious one, but mm -hmm. the reward was definitely um, rewarding. You know, we were, <laughs> I, I was so happy to change um, my parents and grandparents' circumstances because they did everything for me and my children. Right. Did you feel that it was um, intimidating to have come into a group full of men and you were the, the solo woman there that was building and making and, you know, I can understand that your dreams were there, you know, you knew you were going to do this, but the way it came about, was that kind of like a, oh, shucks, I... You know, was it intimidating? Was it encouraging? You know, inspirational? What was it? I was bringing a gang of the guys over with me. So it wasn't like I walked into this big thing that's of right. men. Right. That's it right. It wasn't that's, like that's, that. That's, so it was like, no, I want him, 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 and him <laughs> over here too. <laughs> right, right. That's pretty well, much what it was like. I guess I, I, I did forget that you had mentioned that you had brought over a few of the artists with you when you came um but like for me watching mia x perform or like even just be on which one was it that the make them say um video when you was like in the middle of the basketball court and you was giving it to him you know <laughs> i was like yes like that's that is my kind of girl that's who i want to be like right there you know and Ooh, it, thank you 
Yeah, because you was, a, you know, before there was a such thing as the boss B, you know what I mean? It's like you were that you were you were standing alone and you were standing your ground and you were making your own solo statement. So that I thought that to be very dope. I think that speaks a lot of volume to females that want to get into the rap game. Um, yeah. So it really does. I appreciate that. What can you advise as far as advise as far as what? some of the tribulations being a black female rapper in the industry? You know, I think um, one of the things that, that uh, ladies, we have to make sure that we don't mix uh, business with pleasure. Mm. Um, 20 years from now, you want to still be able to work with the people that you work with, be it the people you start with or people you meet along the way. And you don't want the awkwardness of um, all that sex stuff. Right. So I wouldn't mix business with pleasure. Pimp your pen, don't pimp your integrity. Um, if you don't have children, move in the game like you do. Move like you have little people that look up to you. Move like you got them watching you all the time. I think that'll help layer some protection on the ladies because yeah. when they get in the game you know the guys of course they're gonna try them of course and and, and um so we just we just want to be strong and not easy right and we want to save and write from your heart and mm -hmm. don't let anybody make you feel like you're not worthy. I don't care what size you are. I don't care what color you are. You know, I don't care how you wear your hair. You have to walk in this game knowing that you are valuable. That's why you here. Right. Well, I, I just, you know, for me, I really appreciate that because I think that's so valuable. What everything you said, really. Um, I, what do you have coming up? <laughs> so, <laughs> I put, right? I have my, out. I have my seasoning. It's oh, Mama Mia yes. for, for whatever seasoning. Yes, girl. And of course, you know, I was uh, Essence Fest bestselling author. Uh, I have my cookbook memoir. Now, all the tea is in here. All right. <laughs> um, things my, it's, it's my cookbook memoir. Things my grandma told me, things my grandma showed me. Nice. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I, I'm releasing this rice line. Okay. So one of the first ones is my... Fire jambalaya. So okay. I have fire jambalaya. I have good old dirty rice. I have a jazzed up jasmine rice and a tasty brown rice. Um, they are healthy, but they are not lacking in flavor. And I'm just trying to uh, get my food thing going. And shout out to my squad, Team Whip Them Pots. And you can nice. find all my stuff on teamwhipthempots.com. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Well, then you hit everything. I'm looking forward to getting that rice. So I have I to just... send you some, girl. You have to cook it and take a picture. That's what everybody doing. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got <laughs> for you. Sure. <laughs> for sure. I'm on it. Thank you so much for taking the time out. I'm looking forward to hear more of your story on the next four parts that are left on the five part series. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that success. I'm looking forward to it too. So. <laughs> Thank All right, you well, so take much, care. Man. Have a wonderful day.